The green sunfish is a lepamid native to North America and now found in every single contiguous state in the United States, as well as in parts of Canada and Mexico. I will cover how you can easily distinguish this species from any other fish and then give you some tips on how you can catch them. So I am Koa and this is KN Fish and Smarts where we fishers are always learning and sharing knowledge about fishing and fishes. And this video is an extension from my free to view Lepimus identification guide found at koa.org forward slash sunfishes. Of the 13 currently recognized species of lepimids or common sunfishes, only the bluegill and green sunfish have such widespread ranges across North America. The green sunfish has been introduced widely outside of its native range, now existing with populations stretching to both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Of course, these are freshwater species, they don't go into the oceans. This species has also been popping up in parts of Mexico. The green sunfish is also one of the most promiscuous hybridizers within the genus Lepimus, already proven to have successfully produced offspring with seven other lepimids in the wild. And I've already made a video on the green gill, the hybrid between the green sunfish and bluegill, the most commonly encountered lepimid hybrid. In the description you'll find a link for that hybrid video. The coloration of the green sunfish usually expresses bright blue streaking across the head, mostly below the eye, with that iridescent color existing along the body as spotting, forming irregular rows. The rest of the body is typically a dark olive green with a breast and belly that ranges from cream to dark yellow. Also note that the vertical dark bars are typically faded but may be flared up and very conspicuous at times. You might encounter dark phenotypes of the green sunfish of which may almost appear entirely black. I caught this dark phenotype in Northern Virginia and this one I caught in southern Illinois, right near the border with Kentucky. The dorsal fins typically have light orange blotches between the inner radial membranes, while the margins of the median fins and pelvic fins usually have white to orange coloration, especially present on the pelvic fins and anal fin. Typically, the green sunfish will have some blue streaking on the lips that will not extend entirely across those lips as it would on, say, a long ear sunfish. The green sunfish usually only has blue on the lateral sides of the upper lip. So now let's go over three features that are really good to look at to make sure you have a green sunfish. Mouth size. The green sunfish has a large mouth and jaw structure compared to the other lepimids, except the warm mouth, a species that also has a very large mouth. The posterior end of the maxilla will usually align underneath or past the pupil of the eye. To tell these species apart, note that the warm mouth will not have bright blue streaking across the body and will display three or more dark brownish red lines radiating from the back of the eye. Next look at the pectoral fin. The green sunfish has a very short and roundly pectoral fin that typically will not pass the posterior end of the eye if bent forward. Compared to a pumpkin seed, a species that has a very long pectoral fin, it's quite obvious the length differences. Finally, you really want to look for a dark fin blotch. The green sunfish has a dark dorsal blotch at the base of the second dorsal fin. Only two other lepimid species have this blotch, the bluegill and the bantam sunfish. The bantam sunfish is the smallest species of common sunfish, rarely getting larger than 4 inches in length and will not have any blue spotting running along the body. The green sunfish has a blue spotting pattern along the side of the body, forming those irregular rows. The bluegill, also with that dark dorsal blotch, will have a small mouth, a long pointy pectoral fin, and the body lacks any blue spotting. Well, let's remember the green sunfish has a large mouth, a short pectoral fin, and plenty of blue spotting along the body. The green sunfish may also have a dark blotch at the posterior base of the anal fin. This feature is seen on only one other species of lepimid, 
the bluegill subspecies copper nose bluegill. Again, all bluegill have small mouths, long pectoral fins, and no blue spotting along the body. The body of a green sunfish is described as deep, as the vertical height of the body makes up much of the horizontal length. But the green sunfish typically has a more elongated body than most other lepimids, as in it will have more of a football shape rather than a roundly shape. All lepimids, including the green sunfish, have three anal spines. It is extremely unlikely you'll ever find a common sunfish without three anal spines. Typically, there are nine anal rays, sometimes eight, 13 to 14 pectoral rays, 10 dorsal spines, 10 to 11 dorsal rays. This species maxes out in total length at about 12 inches or 31 centimeters, and the IGFA all tackle world record is 2 pounds 2 ounces or 0.96 kilograms. The opercular flap of the green sunfish is often no longer than the length of the eye and often expresses a multitude of colors ranging from red to orange to purple with some pale edging as well. This colored edging is often diluted compared to this northern sunfish where the red is a strong opaque color. We can see how the color on the green sunfish's ear flap is much more diluted. And the gill rakers on this species are long and thin. I did make another video teaching you how to properly analyze rakers in lepimids, linked in the description below. The habitat. The green sunfish is found in backwaters of creeks and streams and often associated with vegetation in lakes and ponds. Also, you can find the green sunfish in the sluggish waters of rivers. Various size impoundments near larger bodies of water may also hold green sunfish. So now let me give you some fishing tips for catching the green sunfish. I must have caught well over 100 in a three month period when I was doing this guide. And I noticed some interesting behavioral patterns compared to the other lepimids. So the green sunfish seem to take a lion weight approach to hunting more often than not, very similar to how a warmouth does it. Green sunfish didn't usually behave like bluegill, which are more likely to be swimming up and down the water column as active foragers. The green sunfish was typically sitting low in that water column and often hiding in the crevices of rocks and vegetation and even falling trash like tires and buckets. So finessing a few wet flies with a casting rod over these spots would cause green sunfish to dart out after the bait. I found large spider mimic flies with a size 10 hook did well capturing nice mature specimens. A larger size hook, a number 8, would work as well. Giving the wet fly a slow pulse retrieval, allowing the appendages of that bait to really open and close was absolutely irresistible to the fish. All the gear I use is posted on my website, that link is below. And of course a good old worm on a hook never fails. And I'm serious, you don't need a fancy rig to catch fish, especially sunfishes. Just a worm and a hook on your line is all you need. And I mean, I do appreciate how this generation of fishers has become so much more proficient with our methods, our rigging tactics, the gear we use, our knowledge about fishes, their spawning habits. But at the same time, I feel a lot of this intimidates new fishers. I mean, think about when you walk into a, a Cabela's. There's like 20 rows of items. It's intimidating. So for new fishers, don't get dissuaded by that. Uh, a hook and line will do you fine. And I will say this now, and I will say it many times more on this channel. You don't need fancy top-of-the-line gear to catch fishes and have a good time. And definitely for bream or the common sunfishes, expensive gear is not necessary. I caught hundreds of lepimids in a few months using a cheap telescopic rod with a cheap spinning reel to match. Some other gear suggestions, I found that these uh, little owner uh, mosquito hooks just worked fabulous for what I was doing. And I cut the worms before putting them on a hook. You don't need full worms when you're going for lepimids, though. Actually, more than likely, just grab the, uh, the head of the worm or the tail of the worm and then rip it off your hook before putting it in their mouth. 
So you really want to cut it and make the bait profile size match the hook size that you have. Remember, lepimids are fairly small fishes. You're not going after largies here. I also found the Trout Magnet brand, uh, these little crappie slider type things work really well. Whenever I'd find some like riprap or uh, a stacked rocks along the shore, I would run the jig parallel to the shoreline and I'd bump the rocks as I'd go and it would really pull up greens out of those rocks. And that Trout Magnet is a crappie magnet too. If you just cast it a little deeper around fallen structure, like a fallen tree, oh my goodness, you will pull up crappie. Subscribe to Kane Fishing Smarts to join the community, like the video, fish responsibly, and good luck getting some greens. Let me know if you get some.